Good day and welcome back to another DBZ Doka Metal video. In this video we're going to be taking a look at the Ally of Love and Friendship Strength Fidel, who recently got her EZA on DBZ Doka Battle and obviously is a really cool fun unit to run. She's a Defenders of Justice or Pepe Girls category lead of 180%. She raises attack on her normal attack and, great and raises defense one turn. On her unit super attack, which requires her to have a Gohan teen, ultimate Gohan or great Sandman on the team, she greatly raises attack and raises or greatly raises attack permanently and greatly raises defense for one turn. She has key plus two, attack and defense of 180%. She has a 70% or great chance of evading the enemy's attack before attacking. She has an additional attack of 158% when attacking. She performs a critical hit and all allies within the same turn. Get two key after she evades an attack. She gets an additional 58% attack and defense and launches a guaranteed addition or sorry, an additional attack that has a great chance of becoming a super attack after she receives an attack. She gets attacks effective against all types and launches an additional super attack as the first or second attacker in a turn. She gets attack and defense of 158% and a great chance of evasion as the third attacker in a turn. She will get an additional attack and defense up to 58% with each attack evaded. Courage, Money Money Money, Cold Judgment, and Fighter Champion Strength Battlefield Diva and Fierce Battle are her link sets. She also has an active skill, Complicated Female Psyche, which will give her plus 20% to her attack, as well as minus 20% to her defense, provided she activates it from the fourth turn. From the start of battle, if there's an ally whose name includes Gohan, Teen, Ultimate Gohan, or Great Sandman on the team. In terms of categories, she's on Bond of Parent and Child, Defenders of Justice, Earth Red Fighters, Earthlings, Margin Bruce Saga, and Pepe Girls. Overall, I think you can build her in a couple ways. Uh, firstly, she does have crit after evading an attack, so that's great. She should easily evade attacks as well. 70% is a large amount of evasion. It's not like it's not a decent chunk of evasion. And she has that in the first or second slot. Obviously, if you want to give her even more evasion, go for it. But she also has additionals baked in in the first or second slot as well. But if you build her into full additionals, then she can take advantage of both her decent crit chance and, of course, her attack buffs to really, really, really push things out uh, quite a bit as well. So I think in terms of build, she can kind of fluctuate two ways. But I think generally for me, if I was building her, I'd probably go majority additional and then just evasion with everything else. If you can have it with like... 20-ish uh, additional and maybe like 15 evasion. I think that's a good place for her because what happens is then she ends up having like an effective 75-76% uh, effective dodge rate, which is really good. And on top of all of that as well, she can do multiple super attacks, which is obviously very, very helpful as well. So I think all of that together means that she really functions nicely. Obviously, uh, depending on what you want to do with her, her position can change. As a first slot unit or a second slot unit, she has 70% evasion, which is always something that's really helpful. But as a third slot unit, she's basically way stronger defensively. I think overall, for me, uh, she feels like a floater more. She hits harder as a floater, she's defensively stronger as a floater. I just find that she's better as a floater. I just think that as a third slot unit, she gets to dish out good damage, have good evasion, have decent you know, crit, like she can be really solid. Obviously, you know, overall, like the things you lose being in the third slot is obviously triggering the crit off of the evasion because you're never really gonna dodge attacks before you super. Uh, if you're in the third slot, of course you, you can. Technically, if someone AOEs, but it's just not super likely. And then, of course, on top of all of that, you also have, like, uh, functionally, you know, she loses out the additionals. So it's a bit of give and take. I think she's good in any slot, really, just depending on how many dupes you have. For me, a higher dupe unit is way better to run potentially in the first or second slot, provided evasion is allowed, uh, than potentially, like, you know, a 55% unit I'd probably run more as a floater that's just how I am uh, that's just what I think you should do so you know it's really just dependent
for me overall though i do really like how she comes across i do really like everything she brings to the table i think she's a good unit she's obviously majority a good damage dealer she's not necessarily like a oh like an outwardly defensive unit like i wouldn't say she's you know the best defensive unit in the game but her raw defense isn't bad it may look really low because it's all like start of turn and stuff but she has a lot of modifiers that kick in she has her attack of 158 percent when attacking she has her extra defense after she receives an attack she has that extra defense uh, that she gets basically if she attacks in the third slot but i would say honestly for me evasion is definitely her prime principle she's not operating at a functional level without that evasion kick like without the evasion she's not a unit that's going to offer you much but with the evasion she can have really 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 good presence you know like i mentioned when you just look at her obviously there's a couple things that she has that maybe you want to consider obviously you know, looking at uh, i think her damage is the big one multiple attacks 12 13 14 million or in the third slot you know big 20 million attacks she also obviously has as well uh, that evasion i think for me she's good on a lot of teams it's difficult to say what teams to run her on because it's going to depend on which team you need a damage dealer for she feels a little bit kind of like a earthlings version of kefla so like kefla is really cool because kefla can do like two or three super attacks of like 20 22 23 24 25 million and she also obviously has pretty decent raw defense but mainly she can just dodge a whole bunch of attacks and videl kind of feels the same way videl is like in a very similar vein where it's like i'm going to use her she can hopefully dodge a lot of attacks maybe get hit once or something but then she's going to do huge damage she's going to be doing like you know big uh, depending on rainbow or not but big like 16 17 18 19 million crits that she then does like three or four of so it just depends on where you're rolling with her and how many dupes etc if you can run around the team and you need a damage dealer fidel is there if you don't need a damage dealer then there's not a lot to bring her for overall i really like fidel i think she's really solid i think her categories and everything are fine do wish that they had given her just a little bit more uh when it comes to attack i just think attack units are scaling so crazy after the wwc but i do know that videl came out a lot earlier um yeah especially on the jp side so i do understand why maybe she looks the way she does but she's still pretty cool i think she's really solid i think you'll find fun with her on the margin Buu saga or db saga sorry or pepe gals but yeah that's pretty much it for me. Hope you enjoyed the video. See you next time. Till then, take care, stay safe, and bye.